Okay. So just a point on, what's the time? Yeah, okay, 10 minutes, I'll try and do this in 10 minutes. Just a point on testing, which is the next page over. <laughs> so a perfume company uh, gets an inquiry, makes a perfume sample for for the company, yeah, sends the perfume company the sample, but of course it only sends the 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 uh, cosmetic company or the soap company or Unilever the sample after it's done full product testing. True or false? False. False. It doesn't have time. Yeah. Usually, the the cosmetic company or the toiletry company is given the perfume house sometimes two days, yeah, more, more average, maybe a month, yeah. So this product, most products have to sit on, the, on a shelf in the supermarket for a year or more. So what can we do to try to ensure that our product will stand up for a year in the customer's product? Because if it changes colour, will he blame his, his lack of time? Will he blame his face? He'll blame the perfume, yeah? So, most perfumes that go out to customers have never actually been tested in the product, yeah, from, from other than a brief, a brief time. So, what we can do is do some accelerated testing, yeah? We can do it with some quite advanced uh, equipment and techniques, but to be honest, um, they're not a lot better than these very simple ones that I'm going to suggest. Yeah. If, ideally, of course, if we make a, a perfume for a product, or any product, you make a cosmetic, even if you just make a cosmetic, you need to put it into the location where it's going to be marketed for the time that you expect it to have a shelf life. So you expect it to last 12 months. So the ideal testing is to test at the normal op use, use temperature, the normal temperature that it will be shipped at, yeah? That way, you'll get the minimum number of rejects. But you don't have 12 months, yeah? To, to let your sample sit on there. So, what are some of the ways that we can accelerate the procedure? Increase the temperature, yeah. yeah, so number, number one is to increase, increase temperature. That's the biggest. So with an oven, yeah. All we need is a, like an incubator type oven that we can control the temperature on. Yeah. I put it into the end product, yeah. yeah, and then put it into the hope for, ideally into the container that the product has to go into, okay. so yeah. Yeah. So you have your base. So you put it into something that's a fairly neutral container, yeah. If well, if you know they're going to use polypropylene, then you use polypropylene, yeah. But if you don't know what they're going to use, maybe glass, yeah. Is. Yes. Then you can, yeah, then you have an idea of yeah, what you can use. Then you could chill it in a freezer. And that was the other thing. I, we, need one in, we need one in our oven, but we also need one as a control. So usually that will be in a, um, in a fridge at below 10 degrees centigrade, 4 to 10 degrees centigrade. But if we were going to send it, if we expected it to get shocked by very cold climates, we'd also want to freeze it and then um, uh, thaw it. Because what happens to a lot of creams when you freeze them and thaw, thaw them, like, like milk, they will separate into water and cream. Yeah. Goes hard. Yeah. 
before you start this procedure, so you, yeah. you know, or when yes. you're doing it, there's, there's going to be one reference sample. Yes, you need a reference sample. There's going to be one that you put through the hot conditions and one through the cold conditions. And one through, and one at shelf, at uh, regular, regular temperature. Yeah. Um, humidity, if, if we're talking about normal products like shampoo, shouldn't be affected too much because we're in a closed, uh, sealed container. Mm -hmm. But it could affect us if, for example, if we're using uh, powders in a box or something to see how they, they're affected. Should, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but moisture can be a problem. Humidity can be a problem for a lot of products. Yeah, that, that, particularly powders. Yeah. So for your test and product, are you assuming that the cap will always be on? Uh, yes. Yeah, but you could do, you know, for for like um, market testing, proper market testing, then. Ideally, you would have that tested as well, but that's usually beyond the perfumery company's um, scope. That's really to do with the, the end use. Yeah, but you, you know, you might want to try to leave the cap off and see what happens. Yeah, but normally I wouldn't. But yeah, it's an it's an idea. So, what we can do is that we could put these into an oven at 28 to 56 days. 40 degrees centigrade. So what will happen is that because of this increased temperature some of our samples will be spoiled. Now one of the things that I'm getting across, trying to get across here, that if we did these at room temperature We did these, these samples at room temperature. Let's say we had a, a hundred samples. Maybe 50% would pass if we kept them for one year at 20 degrees centigrade. What happens the, the, when we put them into an oven at 28 to 56, yeah? We can shorten the, the time, yeah, to two months, yeah? But what we'll find is of those good ones, maybe we only have 40% left. So we've actually lost 10 good samples with this process. So that's one of the, um, the negative sides of doing accelerated tests. You lose more good samples. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure you could. I think, I think you, you can come on to food products when you talk about this. You could lose like, things like milk and things, you know. The reason that we have pasteurized milk is because of this type of testing has been done. And that's why we, can't, we can no longer even buy fresh milk from cows. Yeah? It's illegal for them to sell it to us. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? But, but on 60 degrees? I'm going to go up to 60, yeah, but I'll, I'll just go through this one first. So if we, if we now raise the temperature by 10 degrees, yeah, we can do now do our uh, test in half the time, yeah, less than a month, yeah, but maybe only 30% of our samples pass. Yeah? So now we've lost 20 good, good samples. And then, and I have done this. Oh, 14 to, sorry, I, yeah, yeah. Seven to 14 days, yeah, seven to 14 days at 60 degrees centigrade. Maybe we end up only with 20% of our samples. So we wasted, you know, 30 good samples. Yeah, they could have been good, successful perfumes in the end product. But 
this increased uh, uh, well, accelerated test, yeah, will we'll spoil many of them. Yes, yeah. Something like that. Let's see. Let's say you do your last one, it takes you to race for, what is it, 7 to 10? 7 to 14 days, yeah. Right, two weeks, you only get 20 to survive. Do you then decide, oh, it's no good, I'm not going to make it to sell it? Or do you need to say, well, I'll sell it at 20 to I'm assuming these are different, different products and that you, could, you would only offer those 20 yeah, but the other 30 oh, okay. would, would be, maybe you did a fruity one for shampoo, okay, that didn't pass, so you never offer that to another customer. Maybe it was actually a really good perfume, yeah? And the truth is that, you know, some of those fresher notes, those interesting notes, would never pass this test, yeah? Whenever you panel test something, whenever you accelerate test something, you go for like in the in the middle. You get these like pretty uninteresting perfumes. Yeah. That's what that's what happens with this test. But you only have a limited time to do it. Another one, an important one, is light testing. One of the biggest problems with You can go out and spend $5,000 on a nice uh, light testing box <laughs> or you can put them in a window <laughs> yeah, and get the same effect, yeah? particularly if you live in uh, India or Thailand where you have really strong sunlight, yeah? you quickly know yeah? in England would take a bit longer. Yeah? <laughs> a couple of years. Yeah, a couple of years. <laughs> But you can also buy UV lamps and things that you can make boxes from. So it's, it's not a difficult test to do. But it's the same thing, you have a control in the fridge, you have one in the light box, one in your oven, yeah. one at uh, shelf temperature. And maybe one if you, in for freeze thaw, yeah, to see what happens to it. And then every, at the end of that cycle, you compare your sample to your control, yeah, to see if the smell has changed and if you're developing the product too, has the product separated and factors like that. Yeah. And you notice on the workbook it has these scores from 0 to 9 that we talked about. Yeah. You can use these scores to evaluate your samples. Yeah. So 9 would be exactly the same as the control. Yeah. 8 would be like mm, almost. Yeah. Five would be not quite, but acceptable. Product change to black, separated, yeah. Smells of sulfur, yeah, would be a zero, yeah. I'm talking about this is different, different perfumes, different perfumes. So if you had 100 perfumes, yeah, if you did a normal shelf test in the market, then maybe 50% of them would pass. But as soon as you accelerate the test, then some, some really nice perfumes would not pass. Yeah? You'd get a nice solid perfume safe for your, your customer, but not, maybe not so interesting in terms of smell. Yeah. What, when we're testing this one particular fragrance that you came for instance, yes, yes. One, yeah. You, you'd only need, I, I would think you'd only need one of each. You could do two of each. But so you're looking at maybe 10 samples maximum you need. Yeah. And you, you know, do the small pots with, yeah. Yeah, yeah, with the perfume in. And, you know, let's say you put two samples uh, of the same perfume under one of these conditions and one failed and one passed, then what? Decision time. <laughs> do you do it again or what went wrong? Yeah. But usually, yeah, usually fail the test because, um, because, but no, 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 not because of that. Because, um, but there's something wrong, isn't there? Something's gone wrong somewhere in your. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah, yeah, contamination or something. Yeah, yeah. We said, we said, a I, I, um, company I work with, with that does this regularly. They they produce five samples. They have five samples. So five for each temperature. So yeah, so five identical samples. One in the fridge, one control. Yeah, one at shelf, one in one in the light, and then one in the oven. You don't need any special equipment for this. No, to avoid any sort of contamination. Oh, I see. If you were doing a microbiology test, you might need that, yes. Yeah. Do you put it under microbiology testing? Not, not, not from the point of view of the perfume, because perfume, there, no microbes can stay in perfume. Because it's concentrated. Because it's concentrated. If it's but if you were a final product manufacturer, yes, yeah. I, my, my approach to this is as, as the perfumer, yeah, to test your perfume. But if it has a biological problem, then that's the cosmetic company's problem. <laughs>